Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you are new here, my name is Amina and I'd absolutely love it if you could subscribe to my channel. I am trying to get to 50k by the end of this year and I'm very close. I do a lot of educational videos, lots of lifestyle productivity. So if you do enjoy that, then please do continue to follow me and subscribe um, for more videos. So today's video is going to be one of those countdown videos. And I know last year when I did this video, I think I did a four month countdown, everyone was like, Oh my god, I cannot believe it's four months. So I thought, why not do it one month sooner just to kind of give you another month to prepare. But this is the five month exam countdown. We are currently in November, so let's not count November because it's basically December at the end of this week. So December, January, Feb, March, April, April. Most exams begin in May. There are some exams at the start of May, some mid-May, some June, so I'm not really going to include May. So five months. There are five whole months left until GCSE exams begin, A-level exams begin, university exams probably have like six months left, but university exams as well, <laughs> sort of in five months time. You need to start to experiment with uh, revision styles and experiment with what suits you. Now there's not one revision style that fits all. Not everyone finds it useful to take notes from a textbook, put them on like these you know, pretty flashcards and to read off. So just trying to identify the way that you learn. Are you a visual learner? Do you learn from just reading something? Do you learn from writing something? Do you learn from a mixture of both? Do you learn from listening to something? Do you enjoy working with people? Do you enjoy working individually? What kind of space do you need? How long do you like to revise? Are you someone that likes to revise for kind of short bursts of time? So for example, there's a, a technique called the Pomodoro technique where you revise for short bursts of time, take a short break and then continue revising. Um, so that's one method. Or are you someone who can sit there all night and study and still be efficient not everyone has the, the same exam technique and the same revision style and I think that's something to really identify now than trying to figure that out close to the exam. You also need to start to find some good resources and collate them. Again, when it comes to the, the exam and it comes close to revision time, you need to be revising, which means going over things that you've learned already. Not trying to write notes in April, not trying to figure things out and understand topics in April. That shouldn't really be what you're doing. You should be doing that now and and then making sure that you have all the resources that you want to want to use and have all the cards that you want to use or the questions that you want to try um, and and use that and keep that for when you need to revise in the future. You should also start thinking about how much of the content you've learned so far. So you may have in school learned everything and you're just going over it again. I'm pretty sure for most schools you're still learning a couple of last chapters up to at least Christmas or maybe just beyond and then you'll start revising. Write down a list of all the chapters or all the topics in every single subject. So let's just say for example in science you've got biology, you've got chemistry and you've got physics. So for each of those um, subtopics you need to think about what different units are there and some of them would be really easy like cells for example you might just need to go over that a couple of times just to make sure but other topics like physics maybe atoms maybe chemistry you might want to go through a couple more times or just you know ask a teacher or find out a bit more about that topic if you feel like you've forgotten or you're a bit weak at it what i'll do is i'll make a spreadsheet and i'll leave that link down below for you to download i'll probably put it on google drive so go and go take a look and download it and and essentially what it includes is just three simple columns the first one is topic is a topic name and you can write down what topic names they, there are so unit one is cells so that's going to be cells unit two what is it unit three what is it so all the units and you can get this very easily from any textbook the second column would be a notes column so in that column you can tick when you've made the notes so if you like to use flashcards you can make flashcards if you like to make kind of like a page of notes for each unit you can do that if you like to do kind of a mind map i know that works really well for some people and again i'll probably show you guys how to do this in the future and um, you can do that but whatever you want to do in terms of kind of going over the, the content um, when you do that you can tick that off for that unit so what happens is you're starting to form a bit of a bank and a bit of a structure to make sure that you've collated all of that information to be used when you want to revise in March April May etc and then the last column would be a revision column. So that column, I'm probably going to split it up into kind of two or three kind of sub mini sections because when you revise, you don't just revise once. Of course, you need to revise that topic a couple of times to really embed that in your mind. And that can kind of show you whether you need to go over things a bit more, whether you've 
forgotten or missed or skipped some sections because don't forget you're gonna have a lot of different subjects that you have to go over and there are lots of units for all those subjects and it can be very easy to kind of focus too much on maths or focus too much on science and forget the other subjects but this way you kind of have a bit of a schedule and a bit of a routine that makes sure that you are covering everything as much as you possibly can so like I said I'll leave that document down below in the description um, just it would be a very very simple you have to fill it in yourself but and you can even make it yourself if you if you really want to it's just literally three columns print it out put it be, you know behind your bed or in your in your like where your desk is or wherever you want to do just have it there um, and it will motivate you every single time you look at it and by doing this you are able to identify weak topics and then get help so you can find out actually I forgot this topic that I did in year nine haven't really looked at it since I don't feel too confident with it let me get some help and you can ask your teachers they're not too busy right now I mean they're always busy but they're not too busy at the moment compared to what they will be closer to the exam so go and ask them for some help um, I'm sure they'll be happy to give you five minutes or ten minutes of their time to help you out or you can even do your own research online but at least that way you've got a bank of um, information and you know which bits you need to kind of focus on a bit more um, and also if you're able to label the units with like what grade they are so something like cells would be foundation you know grade two three whereas something harder might be kind of level eight or nine so it just means that if you are aiming for a nine you're not focusing on grade one or two topics and you are trying to make sure you understand the higher topics as well right now you should also start to embed good habits in your lifestyle so trying to sleep early trying to wake up early um, trying to dedicate some time during the evening or during the weekend if you don't already to get a little bit of work done so by doing this you're introducing that lifestyle to yourself and hopefully it'll be something that you can only build on as opposed to trying to start or trying to you know incorporate that kind of lifestyle into your life last minute is much much harder and less efficient than trying to embed it slowly now you should also start to reread some texts so for example i think this applies more for sort of english arts literature um if you are studying english for example and you have a text that you like macbeth let's say that you are going to be examined and on start to reread it if you haven't read it for a couple of weeks months year maybe uh, and you probably have just only focused on kind of some sections so just go over reread the bits that you think are, are important you think are key quotes you think are key sections um is it the start the end parts where people are killed um romance just parts of the book where you think you need to just reread you want to answer them knowing that you have considered the whole text and if you've forgotten it it's much harder to kind of give a wholesome answer to to your questions and also it kind of you have a bit more time now compared to later so if you do start reading those texts now and you know t t kind of taking some notes highlighting underlining you're just giving yourself that extra kind of just giving yourself one less thing to worry about and one less thing to have to do in a couple of months time this is for someone who has been doing what I've said already and well done to you if you've done that and um, start to attempt exam questions now if you haven't done the notes yet and you haven't done anything I've mentioned so far then don't bother with this point yet we'll get to that in the next coming months but if you are someone who starts to revise and have looked at a couple of topics then start to attempt exam questions and I think this is really important because it means that you're going to work on your timing you're going to work on your exam technique and you're going to work on really homing down on those topics that you struggle with um, the most if you're attempting like English or RE or geography try to do them in timed conditions just so you get a feel of how long it takes you to write what quality of writing you're producing and you can kind of work on the parts that you think you need to work on and again your you can give those questions to and your answers to your teachers because right now they do have time to do a little bit of extra work as opposed to later on when there's a lot of work to mark and a lot more to kind of sort out close to the exams going on the same point of finding what suits you I definitely think that you should try to work with other people and try to teach them so if you know that you understand quadratics and your friend doesn't understand it that well offer to teach it to them because what happens is you are going to embed that information more kind of deeper into your mind as a result of teaching someone i i found that i did this quite a lot when i was in year 10 year 11 and also in sixth form i would always offer to teach people but i never realized what it was doing for me i just thought i was helping my friend and that was it really so when i went to the exam i remembered telling this person this is what happens and this is how you do it and it meant that 
I was learning without even trying to learn. Um, you're applying that information and you, you, you really do, it really sticks in your mind. I remember conversations that I had you know, from 10, 20 years ago because it's a conversation as opposed to something that you've written. Um, so yeah, I definitely recommend trying to find a partner that you know, not necessarily someone that's weaker than you, but someone that you know you could help and someone who could potentially help you as well. But at least, it, you know, that way you are getting that kind of active recall um, and you're memorizing that information in a, in a trust me, a much better way than just reading textbooks can ever do. I really hope that this video didn't scare you, but hopefully gave you a bit of a nudge towards the right direction. You have been given a warning, this is a bit of a warning. You know what you need to do now, so get on with it. Um, if you have any questions, please leave them down below and do leave any tips down below that you think helped you. If you are someone who is in year 12, year 13, give some tips to someone who's in year 11. Let them know what helped. Don't forget to follow me on my Instagram. My Instagram is the same as my YouTube, which is Dr. Amina Giannis. Um, and like I said, don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you guys in my next video. Have a great day, bye.